Hello there! Today I'm talking about productivity fundamentals, which help me stay highly efficient all day long. Some things I'm gonna mention today are basic, and you probably already know about them. Nevertheless, I believe they determine whether you'll be able to perform on the highest possible level or not. Again, they might seem obvious, yet they are extremely, invaluably super important. And don't worry, I'm gonna cover this topic in more detail, so I think you'll definitely learn something interesting and new, even if you have an idea about productivity in general. So what's next? I recommend preparing yourself to take note if something pops into your mind in the process. And let's get started. Many decades ago, people believed that our planet was flat and resting on the backs of four elephants who in turn stood upon the back of a turtle. Maybe you're wondering what this belief has to do with today's video. Let me explain. Let's imagine that the Earth is your productivity and that massive turtle who's under it is our health. What will happen if somehow that turtle ceases to exist? Your productivity along with those four elephants will disappear or maybe it will drift in space. Honestly, I don't know where people thought that construction, including the elephants and the turtle, was located, but that doesn't matter. The point is, without good health, your chances of achieving that peak performance aren't that great. Why? Because I personally consider productivity as something I want to stick to for a long time. Longevity really matters, and the most powerful outcomes of any compounding process are delayed. So I want to do as much as I can when it comes to improving my health and staying efficient. So I basically focus on my long-term gain. When I'm planning, I'm thinking of whether I'll be able to keep up with such a pace or maybe it's too slow, not trying to run a sprint, but rather a marathon. What parts of health do I want to talk about? Probably three of them sleeping, dieting, and exercising. Of course, I want to start with sleep. Actually, I feel kind of proud of the fact that I've almost always had proper amount of sleep, starting from the night after the moment I was born at and finishing with today's morning. In order to prove to you some of my points, I'll refer to scientific evidence, which I recommend checking following the links in the description under this video. Firstly, how much sleep per night is optimal. You might think of 8 hours. And actually, you will be right. According to the American Academy of Sleep Medicine and the Sleep Research Society, 7 or more hours of sleep is enough for adults' ideal sleep health. So aim at least at 7 hours per night on a regular basis. But what if you don't get enough sleep? Bad news as expected. Sleep deprivation may affect your mood and judgment. People who don't sleep enough tend to be more irritable and nervous, and chronic sleep deprivation among adolescents may increase suicidal risk and may also be bad for your safety. For example, when you're driving, because you might not directly feel its negative effect on your alertness, which is again quite distressing. So, that was a couple of words on why I pay so much of my attention to sleep. Of course, it's not a full list of negative effects. One video is not enough to list all of them, but I hope at least one of the effects convinced you on necessity of enough sleep time. Now let's get to the how part. I'm not going to talk about caffeine, not only because it's kind of obvious, but also because I already did it in my previous videos. First thing about sleeping good I want to point out is research shows that bedtime schedule irregularity may be associated with a decrease in average sleep time per day and sleep quality. Hearing for the first time that I go to bed at the same time on weekends compared to other days actually was quite surprising for many people I met. But I gotta say that sticking to such schedule feels great, even knowing that most people are peacefully sleeping in their beds 
while I'm already awake. Let's talk about light. As you know, melatonin is a hormone which controls our sleep-wake cycle. An exposure to blue light in the evening for two hours may actually suppress melatonin. But it doesn't mean that you should avoid using your devices, which are one of the sources of blue light, for two hours before going to sleep. And to be honest, I don't believe that many people would be okay with such a limitation, even if it was necessary. It's 21st century, it doesn't seem that easy to stay away from internet for a couple of hours. What was I talking about? Melatonin concentration recovers within 15 minutes after you cease exposure to blue light. So I think stopping using your devices at least 15 minutes before the time you would like to go to sleep at is optimal. And it's not that hard, is it? Here is a simple life hack which may help you as well. Warm shower or bath can improve your sleep. According to this meta-analysis, water-based passive body heating can shorten the amount of time needed to fall asleep and improve self-rated sleep quality and sleep efficiency. Sounds quite cool. What exactly they mean by warm, shower or bath? Temperature should be from 40 to 42.5 degrees Celsius, which is about from 104 to 109 Fahrenheit. It should take place from 1 to 2 hours before bedtime for about 10 minutes. Let's move to the next massive part of leading a healthy lifestyle. I'm talking about dieting. Mm. This topic is broad, as you might guess, but let me point out key things. Let's break down a little what World Health Organization considers a healthy diet. First, fruit and vegetables. Consuming them in proper quantity may decrease risk of coronary heart disease, cardiovascular disease, colon cancer, and all cause mortality. That's crazy. Even though I've known that fruit and vegetables were important since I was like three years old, this still blows my mind. So what amount are we talking about? According to who? We should eat at least 400 grams every day. Actually, it isn't that much. Let me show you an example. Let's suppose that one cucumber and one tomato are usually about 200 grams together. That's already a half of what we should eat daily. Add an apple and several leaves of cabbage and it's already more than 400 grams. I eat so much more than that. That's cool. Next, limiting fat intake, especially when it comes to saturated and trans fats. It's one of the reasons you shouldn't eat too much fast food, packaged snacks, cookies and wafers. I personally almost never eat that type of products and prefer whole foods that will meet the criteria of eating healthy. And of course, I can't omit to mention sugar. If you consume approximately 2000 calories per day, your norm will be about 12 level teaspoons. But sugars are added to most of the products you may see in grocery store, so exceeding the amount is absolutely easy. And if you consume a lot of honey and green juices without added sugars, it doesn't mean that you aren't consuming large amounts of free sugar. I quit sugar quite a long time ago and intentionally don't buy grocery which contains added sugars and don't feel bad about that. Alright, again, that's not a full list of things you should take into account, but I don't want to make this video too long, so I stop right here. I recommend researching it more thoroughly on your own when you have enough time for proper attention and focus. Next up, exercising. Did you know that physical inactivity has been identified as the fourth leading risk factor for global mortality? It's 6% of deaths globally. Let's do some math. In 2021, around 69 million people died. 6% of 69 million is about 4 million. So 4 million people died because of physical inactivity last year. Wow. 
What are WHO physical activity recommendations for adults from 18 to 64 years old? At least 150 minutes of moderate intensity or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity, aerobic physical activity per week, and muscle strengthening activities on two or more days a week. This is the minimum that's pretty easy to meet again. I definitely do more than that, especially when it comes to muscle strengthening activities, and I notice benefits of it every day. I feel really healthy and energized enough to be productive every single day and become a better version of myself. So this is it. That was a lot of words, so let's recap. I consider health as one of the most important things that determine my productivity. I want to live a happy and long life, so I focus on exercising, dieting, and sleeping. All of these things are insanely important, so I have a regular bedtime schedule. I stick to habits that improve my sleep in order to be full of energy and positive mood. I stick to a healthy diet, which includes some basic things World Health Organization includes in its dietary guidelines. I exercise regularly chasing my dream physique and becoming stronger every day. Subscribe and watch other videos if this one was helpful and have a good day.